Hi there, my name is Karen Hewitt. I'm the District Director for District 3 Toastmasters. And today I'm going to talk to you about a skill that is really going to help you in your leadership journey. And that is the skill of sharing the burden. What do I mean by this? I mean, let's be honest. A lot of people do not see club leadership as something we need to build a lot of teams for because it's a team within itself. Your club leadership executive committee consists of seven members. And yes, that is a fantastic team to get started. However, we have to look at some of the other aspects. You cannot do this all on your own. Your entire club's part of your team. So how can we improve? How can we help? And how can we grow and use this to the best of your abilities and the best of your success? First, I wanna to talk to you about a couple of different styles of leadership. One, and I see this quite commonly, is that don't worry, I got it. I can do it. I have this under control. I can take care of it. And this tends to lead to burnout. It tends to lead to exhaustion. It tends to lead to frustrations. And we don't want to see that. Instead, we want to see you happy and fulfilled and really gain what you need from Toastmasters. The other type of leadership is where you share the burden and you build teams. Now, if you haven't already completed your Pathways Level 2 where you examine your leadership style, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and do that because there are different leadership styles. There is those that are more authoritative. There are those that are more communicative. There are more ones that are more collaborative. There are different styles and you have to seek out which one suits you. However, Whichever style that is, you can still build a team. Now let's talk about some of the things that you need to build teams for. I think one of my favorite examples is actually the role of VPPR. Advertising your club is a big deal and you can recruit every member of your club into the advertising journey. But more so than that, you probably want to recruit one or two people to join you so that way you can interact more you can post in more places, you can get more collaboration and you can grow the vision or the visibility of your club. A great example of this would be as a BPPR, consider yourself a bit of a project manager and develop a social media and in-person advertising plan. Then from there, what you can do is find someone who is maybe great at graphics so they can create flyers that you could possibly print, graphics that you can post on social media. And then you may ask someone maybe fantastic on LinkedIn. So you could ask them to share some of the information on LinkedIn, Facebook, and all the different social media channels. With three or four people doing it, you'll actually get a lot more accomplished. But here's the other part of that. It's also asking your club members to, oh my gosh, I just posted about our open house. I would love for you to share it. One example I have seen is one club is really good. When they have an open house, they go ahead and they send a graphic and what we call copy in the marketing world, which is basically the words to go with it, out to every member of the club and ask them to post it on their social media. This gives them more visibility and in turn, they've already had 10 new members join this Toastmaster year already, and it's not even November. So there is something that is to be said about building teams. As a president of a club, you want to build teams to help ensure that things flow as well as things go easily and you're prepared for next year's elections or contests or any other aspects that may be in play. As a VPE, again, you have a huge responsibility with contests and education. How can you build teams to help you develop mentorship programs, how to develop the contest program so that way you're ready to send your member to the area contest, VPMs. Again, you're going to build teams. It's not just up to you to invite new members to come join the club. Sergeant Arms, if you're in person, having someone helping you set up the room is phenomenal, especially with all the technology side in the hybrid, having that second person there ready to go. Secretary, what if you're not available for me? Have someone that's ready to go to take meeting minutes that works on your team. Can you get what I'm saying here? Having these extra individuals around to help you develop a seamless leadership style is super important. So 
let's get, how do I do it? Because this is the one thing that I always hear from everyone is, well, I ask people and they never say yes. Uh, people are too busy. Uh, people don't know what they want to do. You know, there's always these excuses and these things that they're doing that they cannot do the X, Y, Z. I'm going to be the bearer of bad news here. Unfortunately, that's because you're not doing it right. Yes, you heard me. You're not doing it right. What we have a tendency to do when we're developing teams is we don't do what's called the WIFM. If you don't know what WIFM is, is what's in it for me? What we tend to do, and I have seen this so many times, I've seen this in clubs, I have seen this in areas, I've seen this in divisions, I've seen it all the way up to the district level. You turn around to someone, hi, I need your help. Could you help me? I would like for you to do X, Y, and Z. Yes, asking for help sometimes works, but more often than not, it doesn't because you're looking at it as something that is on your benefit, not on theirs. And when we're constantly looking at what benefits us rather than what benefits the member, we're not really serving them and we're not doing the with them and we're not going to get people that sign up as quickly and readily. The same goes when you're building your meetings. If you turn around and say, hey, I need you to do a speech for me next week, Sometimes that works. But if you turn around and say, you find out what's in it for them, then it tends to work far more effectively. So let's talk about working out what's in it for them. And I'm gonna give you some simple steps in developing this system for you and your club and beyond, because I am gonna encourage you to take leadership beyond your club, because you're here because you wanna learn about being a leader. And the best way to do that is to continually grow your skills. First step, you want to identify the individual that you are looking for to help you on your team. And let's talk about identifying them. This isn't just randomly picking someone and go, oh, well, they'll do a good job. What you're doing is you're looking for core content. You're looking for core values. You're looking for things that will help them grow. You're looking for maybe they have, already have a skill set that you want to help them expand. An example would be, VP, let's take the VPPR again. You know someone's always on social media. Well, they're always on there. They're doing a really good job. You, you love their posts. They're engaging. They're funny. They're just a blast. There, you have a reason to contact them. Or maybe you see how someone's super organized. Or how they're really good with tech. Once you've identified that skill, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to ask permission to speak to them. This isn't, hey, got a minute? It's, uh, hey, hang back a minute. We're not going to tell them. We're going to ask, hey, would you have a moment to speak with me about something? Hey, when would be a great time for us to have a conversation? All these things are asking permission because we don't want to just jump in and say, hey, by the way, I need you to do a role for me. You want to ask permission to talk to them. Once you've got that permission and you start having a conversation, there are a few key things that you need to do. First thing you want to do is you want to be very honest in why you're having this conversation. Okay. Now I know this sounds kind of negative and I think we try and do this only for when we're offering coaching instead of offering compliments. And that is where we miss the mark. So, hi, I just wanted to speak to you because I think I have an opportunity that is going to help you in your leadership journey. Or I think I have an opportunity that's going to help you in your speaking journey. Is it okay that we have that conversation? Okay. And then what you want to do is say, I just want to be clear. What is it that you want to do? What is it you want to get from your journey? What are your goals? Ask them what they want to achieve. Now, this is where your table topics mastery is going to come into effect, okay? Because what you're doing is gathering information. And as they're telling you what their goals are and what they want to achieve and how they want to succeed, you want to turn it around and be thinking, how does that play into the role or the opportunity that you have for them? Okay? Because if they're telling you, well, I just want to compete and I want to get better at competition and 
I want to win and eventually I want to be on the in the national stage and win you know the international champion of public speaking award talking to them about how great they do graphics that is not going to play into that okay you're not talking about the women however talking to them about how you are seeing an opportunity to help build up the membership in the club by promoting it more. That way they can have more of an audience in order to practice that potentially winning speech. Now you're speaking their love language. So as you listen to where their goals are, always one, congratulate them on having goals. Oh my gosh, that is such an awesome idea. I love that. That would really be good for you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. However you do it, however you word it. Then take that table topic mentality and switch it around and then explain to them what their role is, why it aligns with their goals. And then here is a key thing, explain what it really entails. A lot of the times we tell them our role, but we don't tell them what it entails. I really want you to help me with membership. We're doing an open house in two weeks. Are we doing an open house in four weeks? And I really need the help in planning it. And I know you're such a great planner. I saw what you did. This is where you want to compliment. I saw what you were doing with the event you did at work. And I really appreciate your expertise. And I do know that you're trying to work on more team building activities. So that way you can present that to your corporate job to help you get that promotion as supervisor. If we do this and we build a team, we can practice some of those team building skills and put on an open house that you could potentially put on your resume or let your supervisor know that you helped create this event that had a positive impact on the organization. See what I did there? I took a goal, I complimented them with something to, to help them feel like they were capable of it. I then gave them a way that they could utilize it. And I gave them a plan on what was going on. Then what I would do is say, so what this would entail is we do need to plan how we're going to promote it. We're going to need to plan who we need to have help with. Is this going to be an online or a hybrid open house? If it's going to be hybrid, how are we going to set up the room? How are we going to set up the people that turn up in person? then how are we going to acknowledge those guests that come online? How are we going to help them feel involved? Then we need to come up with a theme. We need to come up with an agenda. We, it's an open house. So we want to have a, so maybe someone can do that icebreaker and then we can have an experienced speaker so we can showcase how an experienced speaker versus someone who is brand new and the development that can come from Toastmasters. And then once you've explained it, you're going to turn around and say, would this help you with that leadership goal that you're setting? And if you have done a good enough job of listening, remember listening is a key part and your table topics mind of what they were saying, you would have presented it in a clear way that will help them achieve their goals. And they'll go, okay, yeah, I can see that fantastic can I count on you because honestly you're the best person I can think of for this job I'm here to support you 100% you'll be working with me we're going to do this together again it's about sharing the burden you're not taking this and just putting it on someone else and in that conversation you're also going to discuss how many people they need on the roles how we're going to get them and then you can start planning it can you see how sharing the burden is a far easier thing than just doing it yourself. Because you can imagine as a VPN, VPE, trying to just pull off an open house all by yourself, it's kind of a daunting test. But if you have somebody that is willing to work on the promotion, you have someone that's willing to work on, and not just your officer committee, many hands make light work. And that's what we want to see, is we want to see that burden shared and help you grow. Now, and the one thing I haven't mentioned is how this helps you as a leader. One of the biggest skill sets out there is the ability to build teams that collaborate and communicate. It is up to you to set that precedent of collaboration and communication as you're recruiting team members. And the best way you can do that is listening, honesty, 
and hearing what they have to say. And creating that environment will lead you to success. I challenge each of you for your next task as a club officer, create a small team. And a team doesn't have to be 10 people. It could be two or three, yourself included. And see how much more easier and more effective it is in your role. 